Hello everyone and welcome back to Clinical Cousins YouTube channel. Today we're going to go over how to recognize a strain pattern in our EKG. So what is strain? Well, the way that I like to remember it is that the ST uh, in strain stands for ST and T segments due to an abnormal repolarization in the ventricles. So uh, basically we're going to be talking about if we have right ventricular hypertrophy or left ventricular hypertrophy, uh, both of these can develop what is called a strain pattern which we know if we kind of take a step back, it's just hypertrophy along with some specific ST and T wave abnormalities uh, that we're gonna dive into in just a second. So we're gonna, uh, to make this a little bit more clear, we're gonna go ahead and look at right ventricular hypertrophy with strain first. Uh, just a good little uh, tip or a good little rule to uh, go ahead and memorize right off the bat is that you can't diagnose right ventricular hypertrophy with strain if you don't have right ventricular hypertrophy which is why I included into the criteria. So uh, how will we remember all the manifestations of strain? Well, all we have to do is remember the word strain right here. So uh, let's, let's, let's break this down a little bit further. So the ST in strain stands for ST concave downwards. So as you can see here, it sounds like, or it looks like rather, somebody's taking a little ice cream scoop out of our ST segment. So that's an indication of strain. Uh, an R that is greater than S in V1, well, we know that that's the definition for right ventricular hypertrophy, which we need if we're going to diagnose RVH with strain. So an RS ratio that is greater than 1 in lead V1 will indicate that we have right ventricular hypertrophy. Also, remember also or and or additionally, we need to check for an S1, Q3, T3 pattern or biphasic T waves as shown here. That can indicate that we have strain. And then the IN stands for inverted T waves, as we can see here and here. So when we put it all together, what is RVH with strain? Well, we don't have to remember a lot. Uh, all we have to do is remember the word strain. So we'll have an ST segment that is concave downward. We'll have an R uh, that is greater than S in, in lead V1. We'll also check for the S1, Q3, T3 pattern and uh, biphasic T waves. And then lastly, the IN stands for inverted T waves, which we will likely see with RVH with strain. So uh, what can cause RVH with strain? Well, uh, we know that they could just have a right ventricular hypertrophy, but we also know that they could have uh, a pulmonary embolism, as we can see with our S1, Q3, T3. They could have, uh, it could be normal if, if this is a, an adolescent patient or, or young adult. We know that uh, a lot of the times, uh, pathologies in adults uh, regarding the right side of the heart are, are usually benign in, in children. So uh, always read the EKG in context of your patient. So never read uh, EKGs in a vortex. So now we're going to move over to left ventricular hypertrophy with strain. And basically, if we take a step back, all we know is that uh, this is just going to mean that our patient has a enlarged left ventricle and now it's developed a strain pattern. So how do we remember the strain pattern? Well, we have to remember the word strain, so don't get these to confuse. We're talking about left ventricular hypertrophy with strain at this moment. So LVH with strain, what we need to memorize is that the STs will be down in the lateral precordial leads and they will be uh, elevated in the right precordial leads. So basically when we're talking about left ventricular hypertrophy, we're only talking about the chest leads. So chest leads only, only the precordial leads, and we can see that they will be ST elevated in the right precordial leads, or V1 through V3, sometimes V4, and they will be depressed, depressed in the lateral leads, or V5 and V6. So we have ST depression in the lateral leads and elevation in the rights. And then I also included, this is just repeat criteria, it's to help us memorize and also it fit the acronym that I was using. So uh, we have right ST elevation. So are we at right ST elevation? Yes, we do. All lateral STs depressed. So we can see ST depression in our lateral leads. Remember, it's like a roller coaster. So do we have our right ST elevated and do we have our left leads ST depressed? And then lastly, do we have inverted T waves in the lateral leads? So are our T waves inverted in our lateral leads shown here. So when we put it all together, we can see that we have left ventricular hypertrophy. Remember, slur NEC, one AVL feet, 
all of these equal left hypertrophy. So we know if we meet that criteria, we might as well go ahead and check for strain. So we're only going to take a look at our chest leads now. So we see that if we have ST elevation in the rights and depression in the lateral leads, okay, that's an indication that we have strain. Are our rights ST elevated? Yes, okay, that indicates strain. Are all our lateral STs depressed? Okay, that indicates strain. It's just repeat criteria. And lastly, do we have inverted T waves in our laterals, in our V5, V6? If we do, then we can confidently say that our patient is likely experiencing left ventricular hypertrophy with strain. So a quick recap, what did we go over today? So we went over hypertrophy of the ventricles with strain patterns. So to remember right ventricular hypertrophy with strain, a little quick recap is we have to remember the word strain. So we'll have ST concave downward. We'll have an R that is greater than S and V1. We'll also be checking for the S1, Q3, T3 pattern and for biphasic T waves. And IN stands for inverted T waves in this criteria. So moving on, we're going to left ventricular hypertrophy with strain. So what do we need to look out for? Well, are our ST segments uh, elevated in the rights and then depressed in the left lateral precordials? Yes, okay. Well, are our rights ST elevated? Yes. Are all of our laterals ST depressed? Yes. And lastly, do we have inverted T waves in our lateral leads in our V5, V6? Yes. Then we can say that this patient is likely experiencing left ventricular hypertrophy with strain. So as always, thank you for taking the time to learn with us today. And I hope that you like and subscribe for more content.